Last week, I mentioned to you guys that my course, Motion Capture for Animation, was available for pre-order. Now I'm here, a week later, to tell you guys that now the course is live and is available for purchase and enjoyment uh, straight away as soon as you buy it. Now, this has been a long time coming and I still feel butterflies in my stomach a little bit because the longer you wait to drop something, the more nervous you get when you finally showcase it to the world. So in this video, I would like to actually tell you guys a little bit about what is included in this course, at least in this first part of the course, um, because uh, there's a lot uh, to consume, there's a lot to actually enjoy, and I cannot wait to tell you. So let's get started. So welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's been, as mentioned in the intro, it's been so long since I've been working in this in this course and it feels so good to finally release it. Because uh, when something is in the back of your mind for so long about, I need to do this, I need to do this, sometimes it feels like wishful thinking more than actually doing the thing, even, even though you're doing it. So it's been quite a while, but uh, the way this course is structured, before I go into the details, is very important because even though the course is out now and available for everybody, I decided to kind of like split the course into three parts, right? And the reason why is actually twofold. The first one, I think that is really important for you guys to not only when you get the course that you have a chunk of work that you can work towards and basically, you know, really digest it and, and kind of like assimilate it and understand it, um, and then later on, we'll have another chunk of work that it was gonna be a similar in size that you can also assimilate and actually kind of like digest properly. Because what I'm trying to teach here in this motion capture course, it's about, I don't know, 20 plus years of experience of motion capture. And even though the course obviously is not gonna be 20 year long, <laughs> but it has a lot of information. And the information is really dense because it goes from planning mocap to directing mocap to then cleaning up mocap with no tools to cleaning up mocap with tools, explaining the, the importance of actually working with others, working with studios, working with teams, and, and there's so much to actually digest. And the, the reason why is because I want this course that once you buy it once, once again, not only can you keep it forever, but also all future updates are free, but also I want you to keep it in your pocket because if you are a junior animator or an animator that perhaps hasn't really joined the industry yet, some of this stuff might actually go over your head, but a lot of the basics is go, are still gonna be there. But as you develop more and actually become more professional, you will be able to actually take some of this stuff with you and rewatch it and try and understand it with fresh eyes and fresh perspectives. And this is why I actually do it in chunks this way. Plus the second point of why I do it this way is also because it allows me to really um, spend time perfecting and making these videos for you guys. As you guys will see, um, and I'll show you here a, a few behind the scenes, every single video that I make, I normally has an introduction like this, speaking to camera, and then I move over over there to my computer, and then I'll show you on the computer what I am talking about and why I am talking about it. And the reason why is because the way the course is structured, and once again, going back to general topic on the overall course, is that I think it's very important as you learn any course, at least to me, whenever I, uh, I learn from the best and I learn from, you know, really good uh, teachers, there's always like a, a like a, a, a story or some type of like um, a setup or reasons why you have to learn these things and then you learn it because if your brain works anything like mine, if you're just learning something for the sake of learning, let's say the graph editor, or let's say how to import mocap into Maya, or how to set up your Maya for motion capture, you're learning that thing specifically for this one reason, because you know it's gonna be useful, but when you realize how people use it in the industry or why you actually kind of like using it or seeing it in a specific way in the industry and how this might be useful in the future, all of a sudden your brain is almost like, it opens up a bit more and you really digs in and goes like, okay, see this information is important, let me put it on the compartment of important information for later. And this is basically how my brain works and this is how I broke down the course in this way that I normally do an intro, explain why I'm teaching these things, and then I teach the thing, right? That's basically how I'm gonna go about it. So without further ado, the course at the moment, as mentioned before, is broken down into three parts. The first part, which is the part that I just released now, is gonna be all about explaining about 
why mocap and why so important for games, uh, how I used to view mocap, especially as a hand key animator, how I see it now 20 plus years later, and how useful it is for you as an animator as you get into the industry. And then we go into planning, right? It's something that a lot of people don't talk about, but mocap planning, shooting like mocap in a volume and planning the stuff is something that even though it's really important, people don't talk about it because it's not sexy, because you cannot see something in the screen and you have to stare at an Excel sheet, which is horrible. And I actually go ahead and tell you why it's so important, but also show you why it's so important with an Excel sheet. And then I actually like give you that Excel sheet that you can download yourself so you can then plan your future shoots. And I wish I had that back in the day when I started, because a lot of the time you just get thrown in the, into the deep end and basically just go, now shoot mocap, see what happens. And mocap is so expensive. You, get, you spend hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions in the mocap shoot. So if you don't do it well, so much money gets wasted. And if you work in a AAA studio that has infinite amount of money, then it's no problem. But if you work in a mid-level to a to a like a, a indie level studio and they are spending a lot of money on a mocap studio and a mocap shoot, then you know that you need to actually make like squeeze as much of that shoot and that money as possible to get the most mocap that you possibly can for your game. So the stakes are incredibly high. And I had to learn a lot of these things, including setting up my own Excel sheet myself. So I'm basically giving you my basic Excel sheet so you can then build upon it yourselves. So that's basically planning. And then after planning, we kind of go into the mocap actor. So Eric Jacobus, which is actually a really awesome mocap actor, kind of joins me for this course. He's working with us at Proxima. So he kind of just shot a few things for us as well for the course. And he basically explains from a mocap actor perspective, why is it so important? How does he see mocap? Um, what kind of things do, should we lo be looking for? How it is to work with directors, things like that. And then after that, because I have here my notes, um, we are actually gonna go into working with teams, right? Which then kind of stops being about the individual and you kind of planning and you thinking and you doing the thing yourself. And then it goes into basically a little bit more bigger picture when you have to work with others. And this is another thing that people don't talk about very much because once again, it's not that sexy, <laughs> but it's something that is very much like essential for the mocap shoot because it's not just gonna be you, the director or lead or senior or animator sh like shooting the mocap, it's gonna be you, the actor, the people from the mo mo motion capture studio, uh, it's going to be also like, you know, the team that you direct, if you have a, direct, uh, a team to direct, a team that you lead perhaps, um, that's gonna be so many people involved that you're gonna have to take care of. Even if you work as an individual, right, doing your own game, shooting your own mocap, up. thinking about some of these stuffs help helps because it means that you're being thorough and planned when you do this stuff. There's nothing worse than you actually constantly reshooting mocap because you made mistakes. And this is why we actually go in into this mocaps course and being as thorough as possible. So you go from small picture to then bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you start to see how things come together later on when we go into the practice, right? So after that, we go into setting up your Maya for motion capture. So this is another important step because once again, Maya is very, very much vanilla. I keep going on about it here in the, in, the, in the channel. And you can set up your Maya for everything, right? Like you can set it up for hand key, for modeling, for rendering, for VFX. Maya can do everything, right? So Maya can also be specific for motion capture. And this is why I kind of uh, teach you how to set up your Maya specific for motion capture so you can basically remove all the clutter and not look at any other buttons except for the ones that you need the most so you can be as effective as possible. Because another part of the equation here, especially if you're just an animator cleaning up mocap, is how fast can you clean up mocap at a high quality? Because uh, like the studio spends so much money shooting mocap in order to get the data back to then see the data in game. So you basically have to actually kind of create a funnel that ends up in the game. And uh, if the team or the animators are not fast enough to actually clean up that mocap and really go through that, that motion that it takes to actually clean up like maybe 50 files or 100 files of motion capture over many, many days, if you're not fast at doing that, it means that you become a barrier for the studio, right? Then they start asking questions to either the 
person in charge of this of the of the department the animation department or the animators why is this taking so long i thought we shot mocap so we can be quick and put it in game why is it taking so long so this is why setting up maya and doing all these things kind of starts to help you to make sure that you are a fast animator that you actually are working as um, efficiently as possible. Now, after set up Maya, we actually talk about Nubian. And I think this is a highlight for a lot of people because, you know, the rig comes with the course, obviously. So I actually take you through Nubian and I take you through the simple controls of the, both the character and the weapons, but also take you through some of the most advanced controls as well if you actually want to play around. There's a lot to actually go on with Nubian. So I definitely actually made a, like a chunky video to make sure that we go through the details, analyze the rig, and basically allow you to give you the tools to actually go ahead and uh, you know have fun with Nubian as much as possible. It's all at this point that you have to download the rig and you start playing around with the rig and you get familiar with it. And then after that, we actually start to kind of like import mocap into Nubian, right? Um, like in between the beginning and here, we already looked at motion capture, the density of motion capture. We looked at FBX and file formats. There's a bunch of other things that happens in between. I'm just summarizing here. But then when we actually go uh, into importing mocap, that's where we look at the density of the keys, which is a problem that a lot of animators have if you're watching this right now and if you try to clean mocap, one of the first things and the first scares that you have as an animator, especially when you haven't seen mocap before, is that as soon as you open a mocap file that is raw and you put it in your character, all of a sudden there is keys absolutely everywhere. Your graph editor looks like a mess and you don't know what to do. And then somebody's asking you, now clean it up. But then you go, what can I clean? The, the data is already done, the data is in my Maya, the character is moving, so what exactly should I clean? So we go from looking at the density of the motion capture to then looking at how to clean up that motion capture in the most simplest way. And the first time that I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it with any plugins whatsoever. I'm gonna do it super simple, no plugins, hands-on, on Nubian, and we're gonna clean up the idle. And an idle is incredibly important. I explain the importance of an idle. I've gone, gone through it here in the channel before, so definitely look it up, but I've exp I have explored and, and explained the importance of the idle in game. It cannot be understated. The idle is the hero of the game. So the idle is incredibly important and people keep forgetting about that, especially external departments outside of animation. Uh, so I go through it, I'll tell you about the pros and cons, how the idle is important. We clean up the idle in between all that to make sure that you understand how to clean it up in a very simple way that allows you to have a perfect loop, that allows you to actually kind of like have something specific to, to export. And in between all that, yet again, we actually have a couple of plugins that we'll go through. So we have uh, one by Kyle Figgins, a plugin that hasn't been released yet, that is gonna be released when this course gets released, that is all about importing mocap in a Kyle Figgins rig. It's a really simple plugin that is very powerful and allows you to kind of like import uh, mocap into Nubian, but also any other Kyle Figgins rig, which as you guys know, there's a lot of them out there. So I'm pretty sure after this course, you'll be able to actually get other Kyle Figgins rigs and be able to import mocap. And then it's also a simple exporter, if you actually wanna use, this is optional, that you can export that mocap into an FBX that you can put in a game at a later point. And at this is at this point, after cleaning up the idol, that we stop on part one. There is so many videos and so many sections in all between all that, that I thought that this is enough for people to kind of like just wait, digest it, read it, download the files. We have examples of what an FBX is. We talked about, we talk about the FBX previewer. Um, we kind of like, I give you like a sheet, an Excel sheet with a lot of information in it. And so there's so many things they can go on. Documentation as well, there's online documentation for all these things. So lots of stuff to consume and I don't wanna overwhelm people. And also I wanna make sure that for the next while, I wanna work on the course. Now, bear in mind that the second part is not gonna take as long as you probably think. It's probably gonna be sooner rather than later, but I don't wanna to commit to a date just yet, just in case I actually kinda of ran a little long, but it's gonna be most likely sooner rather than, than later for sure. It's not gonna be next year. It's definitely gonna be soon this year for sure, but I wanna make sure that you guys are, are bracing for it and are working hard if you join the course already uh, to make sure that you make the most out of it. So that is the first part of the course. Now, 
After this, and I'm not going to spoil it too much, we are going to go into the most advanced mocap tool. So that's going to be part two. And at this stage, we are definitely going to talk about plugins and why they're important and how to actually clean up mocap in massive amounts and how does it work with a massive team, things like that, that basically allow you to work with motion capture in bulk, which is normally what people want to do especially if you want to do motion matching or any of these things going on right now, you definitely want to work in bulk. It's not going to be the individual animation, it's going to be more about the quantity of the animations. So that's coming in part two. And then in part three, I'll leave it as a TBD because I know exactly what I'm going to do, but I don't want to spoil it because it's going to be pretty special. <laughs> but that is coming also this year at some point. So both part two and part three are coming this year. So that, that should at least give you a little bit of a time frame of what we're working with. And if you're interested in this course, right? If you, all those things that I mentioned make sense to you and you're interested and you picked your interest, make sure to sign up now. Once you sign up, just know that Every single thing that I just mentioned here that is coming later is, is coming to you for free. The course is not going to be more expensive. It's just going to be for free if you already enrolled now. So you just get all the updates that we're going to get, uh, including the vehicles that are coming, including, including all this part two and part three. And it's going to be an incredibly beefy uh, course by the time we finish with it all. And you're going to have lots of information and lots of assets and all that stuff that you can keep for later. So if it sounds like your kind of thing, click the link down below. You can find the course down there. I'll leave a link on screen here so you can know where, it, where to go. But so far, there's been lots of people joining. Thank you so much for every single person that has joined us so far. It's been quite overwhelming to see so many people pre-order. I didn't expect for so many pre-orders. That, that shows me a lot of love and shows me that you guys believe in me and I'll hopefully can actually showcase or like, you know, payback for that like trust in me with a really good course that you guys can really truly enjoy. So that's it. That's all, all there is about the course. Once again, thanks to everybody that actually joined us that so far. It's been absolutely overwhelming to see so many people pre-order ahead of time. Lots of trust. I appreciate you guys. And if you decide to join, I'll see you in the forums that we have in the course itself behind closed doors where I'm answering lots of questions about the course, you know, anything else that you guys have as you process in the course. If you have questions, I'll answer them there. So I'll see you there. And if not, I'll see you guys here next week as usual on a Friday as usual. Until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.